had this idea to create something like a Batman combat training guide, so if that's something you'd be interested in, then please leave a comment below so that I know you're interested. News of the record-breaking turnout, though, was eclipsed by yet another story of the masked vigilante known as the Batman. So here it is guys, I'm very happy to present the much requested, much anticipated Batman Combat Training Guide. The first video I created related to this was the Batman Fight Style video earlier this year in which we explored the different martial arts styles that Dark Knight has used throughout the many depictions in which he's appeared. So there was so much stuff that could have gone into this video but I wanted to try to include things that people could really implement at home without, you know, having to require billions of dollars to spend on gadgets and technology. So Batman's purpose requires a complete training program that includes a vast array of different techniques for various scenarios that he finds himself in. The video will be broken down into a few different aspects and I wanted to try to make it as complete but also as applicable as possible. So firstly I'll give an overview of why I've chosen to structure the program in this way. The next will be a list of some techniques I've chosen that Batman utilises including demonstrations that can be practised at home. Then finally a workout plan in which these techniques will be categorised to be implemented at different times including conditioning drills and methods of training to go along with them. I've mainly based this program on the version of Batman that appears in the Arkham game series because although it does contain some physically impossible moves for us to be able to train, it is the most complete and refined version of Batman that we've seen to date, so sometimes I'll be referring back to that as well. So let's firstly talk about the fundamentals for this and we can ask the question, what type of attributes are essential for Batman for his goals? Well the first thing that came to my mind is that he's almost constantly in life-threatening situations and although he doesn't kill people, he literally has to incapacitate his opponents quickly or lose his own life basically and not only that but remain composed as to do it multiple times when against a gang for instance. So it's safe to say that he needs to get through people fast as he's often got multiple opponents to contend with so stopping power is a big thing for him as well as knowing where to actually hit people. Now for me, in devising this program, I had to think about what it would be like to be of a much larger height and build like Batman. I'm way smaller and would generally move more like a Nightwing, delivering multiple hits at speed rather than some of the more favoured knockout blows that we see Batman using. So one of the main things that Batman needs to focus on is his technique being absolutely on point so that he can derive the maximum power from his strikes, which is what I believe he would focus on heavily as well as specific conditioning work. He would achieve this through refining his technique and then working upon specific strength and conditioning, which is why I recommend some dedicated practice of the techniques in their most basic form as I will demonstrate later in order to refine this. So not only does Batman require that big stop in power but he also needs the endurance and agility to be able to execute the techniques against his opponents effectively. This balance can be challenging to achieve and would be different for each person depending on their own individual attributes and it can be difficult because certain attributes are more conducive to developing one of those areas. Say for instance being leaner and lighter makes improving agility and having greater endurance easier to manage. However too far in that direction would then begin to take away from the power Batman needs to be able to stop people quickly. Conversely too far in the other direction and focusing upon power more exclusively runs the risk of neglecting the development of agility. So it's no good to be able to deliver all of these super quick strikes if they have no stopping power behind them and no good having all this power if you can't move in and out of the danger zones quickly enough to minimise taking too much damage. For this reason there will be recommendations to work on different elements of training at different intervals. One thing I've noticed is that Batman employs a common sense and adaptable approach when he's in combat situations, meaning that once he's delivered an attack he tends to use the most direct and simple attack on the subsequent enemy. As he often 
often doesn't have the option to say reset his stance after beating one person up so he has to be very adaptable and fluid which indicates he would have a lot of moves in his arsenal. This is naturally something that's going to be very difficult to train without having multiple opponents but is a principle that can be kept in mind when working out like this. For instance although these are both valid this combo utilising a jab, rear elbow, body shot and rear round kick requires a little less movement and is more logical than say executing a jab, cross, rear elbow, lead leg switch kick. This approach can also be applied to individual motions as well such as going straight from a cross into a same arm elbow strike by simply moving in and shortening the distance between you and the target. And before we get into it guys you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Instagram and feel free to message me if you have any questions about the program and I'll do my best to help you out. I've also created a download of the workout that is linked in the description below but that will make more sense at the end of the video. So just to recap on Batman's martial arts background, as we discussed in the predecessor to this video, we can determine that his base style was boxing that he learned from Ted Grant. And we also know that he's a master of 125 martial arts styles and underwent extensive training with the League of Shadows as we saw in the Nolan depictions. All of this culminates in the description that his primary form of combat is an idiosyncratic admix of Taekwondo, Muay Thai, Judo, Kickboxing, Karate, Boxing, Jiu Jitsu and Ninjutsu. And there's also weaponry in there as well but this video won't cover that aspect as it's not really an area that I'm familiar with. So there's a hell of a lot to contend with there and for this reason I want to cover any potential comments that people may make that I should have included X or Y etc. I've had to make decisions about what to include and what to leave out of the video as I'm sure you as the audience are able to understand. Before we get into it I want to touch on a very relevant point which to my knowledge has had little to no representation in any of the Batman media I've encountered outside of the brief element of it represented in Batman Begins during his League of Shadows training and that is sparring. We usually see an already established Batman fighting against criminals and sure this would be great real world practice but it would be too risky for him to rely solely on this area for his training. In reality Bruce would need continuous sparring practice against very high level martial artists to ensure that he was keeping his skills honed and on top of that against multiple opponents as well. However that would then run the risk of people finding out his secret identity so there's also that to contend with. I think this is a big hole in the Batman mythology personally that I would love to see addressed in future depictions. So for this reason sparring training is included in the training program and I understand that this may not be possible if you don't have anyone to train with so if that's the case then you can double up on one of the other elements as you see fit. And lastly, something I considered is the idea that Bruce would be likely to perform his training wearing the full bat suit, as this is the attire he wears out in the field. So the audience may wish to wear heavy clothing or even something like a weighted vest for some elements of the program if they wish to potentially stimulate the added weight of the bat suit and gadgets that Bruce has to take into account. So let's begin with the fundamental techniques then that will be separated into specific categories.
So we've come to the workout section now, which will utilize many of the elements already showcased. The workout is based on a four day on, one day off schedule, and for that reason, I haven't specified any certain day of the week for the program to be implemented. Just begin whenever you can. The program is structured in a way that covers a broad range of elements that are essential to Batman's training in combative arts. I'll give a description of each now, and then afterwards I'll give a full list of the workout at the end. As mentioned, I understand that some of this stuff requires a partner and specific equipment that may not be accessible for everyone, but this is just a sample workout, so implement what you can and switch out other stuff if needed. Either way, this is all useful stuff to know, and you can always implement new things in the future. Day one is technique practice. Firstly, warm up and get loose using the agility ladder or a jump rope for one or two rounds. Next, you can choose to do the technique practice in a number of ways, those being used in various types of training bags, pads, or shadow boxing, or any other methods of your own choice, but the focus is on technique. These rounds, of course, will double up as activity-specific conditioning with the body adapting specifically to the activity being performed. Firstly, get into your flow by implementing two two-minute rounds of shadow boxing, varying in pace. Then begin using your training tool of choice for eight to 10 two-minute rounds, aiming to implement techniques that were demonstrated previously. We're looking for speed and accuracy on this day with moderate power, as there's another technique day during the program which will focus more on power exclusively. Day two is stand-up sparring. For sparring practice, it's important to work with somebody who you have a mutual agreement about the goal of this practice. Working with some egomaniac who just wants to take your head off isn't gonna enable you to learn, so work with somebody with a decent level of skill and control. We're gonna do 10, two to three minute sparring rounds. Rounds one to four will be light and technical as you'll be getting into the flow, and the first few rounds of sparring are always a little more tense and less fluid. So use these to warm up and work on some tactics and defense. Rounds five to 10 will be similar, but at a faster pace with a little more power. Aim for around 50 to 60% power. Day three is a bodyweight conditioning circuit. The way this works is as follows. There are two sets with four exercises each, and you want to do these at speed. Repeat each of the exercises for 30 seconds without a break until you've completed all four, which reaches a total of two minutes. Then rest for 30 seconds and repeat this again for a further two rounds, resting 30 seconds between each. Once you've finished the first round, then move on to the next set with four different exercises and do the same thing over again. After finishing, as a bonus, you can work with a partner to condition your body to take certain strikes. Assume the hollow position for 20 to 30 seconds while your partner delivers moderately powerful strikes to your abs continuously for two rounds. Next, stand up and place your hands behind your head and have your partner deliver punches to your oblique area for 20 to 30 seconds with moderate power continuously. Day four is grappling practice. Firstly, we're gonna do two three minute rounds, training a mixture of wrestling and ground techniques with a partner. Again, work with somebody who understands the aim and is not a savage who's just gonna ragdoll you around. Next, we're gonna do two to three two minute rounds of grappling, only sparring. I've used some of my friends for these clips because grappling really isn't my area and I wanted to leave it to people who knew better about it than I did. Day five is a complete rest day or you can do some active recovery. Day six is technique practice once again. Warm up like before with the ladder or jump rope followed by the shadow boxing rounds. Then using your training tool of choice to do the work once again. However, today we'll focus more upon powerful blows for six, two to three minute rounds. Don't worry about stringing together long combinations here. It's more about training to apply power to individual strikes or short combinations. Day seven is sparring practice once again. Today's sparring practice is eight, two to three minute sparring rounds. Like before, rounds one to four will be technical to get into a flow. Then rounds five to eight, we want to apply a bit more power and intensity into the strikes. So you want to get stuck in with your opponent a bit more on the later rounds, but still keep your composure and control throughout. If it's applicable, you can also do full MMA sparring here using MMA gloves so that you can both strike and grapple simultaneously. So that was the last day of the program, but tomorrow you will begin again with day one, adhering to the four day on, one day off split. And lastly, I'm gonna include a few striking combos that I put together utilizing the techniques as a bonus section, because it didn't really fit with the flow of the video once it came to editing, so those will be shown now. 
So combo number one is the tornado elbow strike followed by a lead body shot to lead hook ending on a rear round kick. Combo number two is a double jab cross jab and we push back on that jab to a jump spinning back kick. Combo number three is a rear body shot to lead hook followed by a rear elbow to the same pushing back jab as the previous combo followed by a spinning back kick. Combo number four is just a simple rear round kick to spin back kick or spin hook kick. Combo number five is a jab cross to same arm elbow at the same time transitioning forward into southpaw followed by a back fist into a tornado kick. Combo number six is a jab cross at the same time transitioning forward into southpaw delivering a circular downwards elbow to a same arm push elbow finishing on a spinning elbow. Combo number seven is a jab cross hook coming through the target, then delivering a back elbow strike with the same arm, finishing on a spinning elbow. And combo number eight is starting in southpaw, we're gonna do a shoot forward jab to close the distance, followed by a same arm body shot, rear leg round kick, and then finishing on a retreating Superman punch. So we've reached the end of the video guys, I really hope you enjoyed it and it's given you some things to implement. As mentioned, you can get a download of the workout below so you don't have to keep referring back to the video all the time. And please follow me on YouTube and Instagram where I'll do my best to respond to any questions you may have about the program. Thank you guys and I'll see you in the next video.